Hi there, my name's Liv and I paint things. For this week's video, I'm filming another episode of the Not So Podcast, podcast known as the Paintcast, because I have this old painting of one of my family dogs named Brutus, and I wanted to paint his sibling, Ruby, because she is very cute. Look at this photo of her. She's so majestic. Oh yes, very majestic. This is going to be a pretty small painting. I'm just painting it in one of my watercolor sketchbooks, so it's nothing too intense. Whenever I do the sketch for paintings, I always have a sort of rough shape that I start with, and then I go in afterwards to get the more detailed shapes. I kind of do two steps for this because I find the rough shape helps me sort of figure out the proportions of what I'm going to be painting before I get into the nitty gritty details. For this painting, I'm going to be using acrylic gouache. Uh, the brand is called Holbane. I really like gouache because it has a lot of the runniness of watercolor paint without the ridiculous drying time. Hmm, never mind. Apparently, you're not supposed to make gouache super runny. I have a tendency not to listen to things. <laughs> because I am self-taught, I kind of just do whatever feels right. So for me in the past, gouache felt like watercolor paint, but also acrylic because it's acrylic gouache. So it's like the runniness and the transparency of watercolor, but then it dries a lot faster, kind of like how acrylic does which is why I liked it so much and why I'm not really a fan of watercolor because I find it needs immense levels of patience and I don't always have that, at least whenever it comes to just literally watching paint dry. This isn't really going to be a tutorial on how to use gouache. It's kind of just how I use it, which isn't right. <laughs> if there is a right way to use paint. For me, I kind of just do whatever feels good, I guess. Whatever feels like it should be done. I just kind of follow my intuition basically for a lot of things. But I guess I'll give a little bit of a description of what I'm doing. So I like to work in a lot of layers whenever I paint with gouache. So I start off with the main color. If you were to take the picture that I'm working off of as reference and kind of just blur it so it's just colored blobs, you have the white strip that goes down the center of Ruby's face. Then you have her black nose, her black eyes, her actual eyeballs are very orangey brown, and then she's got like this orange brown around her ears. So I start off with the main color, which is the orange. And then I have brown for the sort of black areas because I don't like to go in with the darkest color first. And then I don't even really paint the white part of her face. Like the actual white parts, I just it's just paper. I didn't add white paint on top of it. It's just the white paper showing through. I do end up adding some grays to add some definition and shape and dimension to her face. So for the first layers, I tend to make the paint really watery. I guess you're not supposed to do this, but I don't really care because I think it looks good in the end anyways. But I guess it's always a nice way to learn, just doing things and figuring it out. Definitely for this one, I put more layers than I probably should have. Like whenever I was going back and rewashing it, I painted the same spots probably like four times, especially the black of her face. I should have just gone in with a really dark brown and then put black over top instead of working up from this gray to this light brown to this medium brown, I should have just gone brown to black.
And now that I know that you're technically not supposed to water down gouache this much, I probably will change my technique a little bit in the future. There were some times later on where the watering down of the paint actually was pretty bad because I didn't know this, but whenever you paint with gouache, apparently if you add more water onto paint that's already completely dried, it'll actually sort of reactivate the paint and pick it back up, which is kind of interesting because it's kind of like the water is acting like an eraser without actually erasing the same way that erasers and pencils do, but it like picks up the color again, erases it in quotation marks, which I didn't know before. So it's just a matter of building up a lot of color. I kind of work in sections of color. So I started with the oranges and then I moved on to the light brown. Then I moved on to the darker brown and then the blacks. After I have the base layer of the paints done, I start to work with paint that's more saturated, um, so I use less water and more paint. I kind of go from using it as like a watercolor paint into using it as an acrylic as the painting progresses. It also usually coincides with whenever I start doing the details because I find it's easier to do details whenever the paint is really paint-y and less watery. I don't really know how I would describe my painting style whenever it comes to gouache. I find it's very different from how I paint with oil, but then in some other ways it's not very different. A lot of my oil paintings I find are realistic and bordering on hyper-realistic, but then in other ways they're very graphical and messy. So whenever you're really far away, or even just far away, they look photorealistic in a sense, but then whenever you get closer you can see that they're a lot rougher. And I find that's kind of the case with gouache painting, but it's more extremely graphical for the gouache because it's more like chunky and you also have the, um, I guess they're called the water spots where I mix a lot of water into the paint and treat it more like watercolor and it's got that sort of washy chunk line. I don't really know how to describe it. It's not smoothly blended. It's a chunk of watercolor, I guess, which tends to make it look more graphical. The one thing that I really like about gouache also is whenever I start doing all of the little hairs, I go in painting them on with P2000 
pure white. It's just sort of watered down, so it's more of like a translucent white. But then after it dries, I can actually paint over that white with browns and yellows, basically whatever color I want. And I find it mutes the white a little bit in a nice way, it kind of like blends it into the rest of the fur. Gouache is very satisfying to paint with though. It's very weird because whenever you're, at least whenever I'm working with it, I'm looking at what I'm painting. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> this looks awful. But then I just kind of keep working on it and it ends up turning out fine. Like that's one thing I found I've learned if I were to compare my art whenever I was in, for example, high school, I would paint something and I'd be like halfway through and it would look bad. And I would say, this is bad. I need to stop it because it's bad and just throw it out completely. But now I'm more, I try to actually finish the things that I start instead of just giving up like halfway through. Cause I feel like no matter what you do, whenever you're halfway through something, it's always gonna look halfway done. <laughs> Like there's nothing you can do about how it looks in the beginning and in the middle, except for just finish it. I also feel like one of the best things about being a self-taught artist is the fact that a lot of the things I do are sort of atypical, <laughs> for lack of better term. Like I don't know how to do things the proper way, so I kind of just do them the way that I feel like they should be done, like using my intuition. Which I find can be very interesting, especially whenever I compare to like other artists that also use a lot of their intuition because the different ways that people use mediums is very cool. And I think there are important things to learn whenever it comes to art. This, the stereotypical things that you hear whenever you look up art courses, like line and shape and value and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I feel like that's very important, but whenever it comes to actually how you're supposed to use mediums and actually put the medium down on the canvas or the paper or whatever you're using. I think it's more interesting whenever people just kind of do whatever they want because it really doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, there's some things that do matter. If you're focusing on how long a painting or a piece will last, like if it's really important for you that you have an oil painting that will last like 400 years and the color will never dull and blah blah blah, then obviously there's some things that you might want to follow and pay attention to, but I don't really care about that so much. <laughs> so I kind of just do whatever, which is why I will sometimes paint with oil paint on watercolor paper, which is sort of a big no-no because the oil seeps through the paper and paper generally is pretty bad to paint on, but it's more convenient than painting on a whole canvas and I get to use things like gouache, which is very fun because I don't think you can really paint with gouache on a canvas. I mean, you probably could, but I wouldn't. <laughs> My camera ended up dying at one point and I didn't really notice, but I added some blue and gray wash to the sides of the nose and the head to add some nice little shadows because in the photo there was a little bit of blue. And blue is a color that I tend to forget exists whenever I'm painting and it's not super apparent. 
So it was good of me to add that because I think it added a little je ne sais quoi to this painting. The last thing I do, as always, is the whiskers. They're the last little finishing touch before I get on to the final shots. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a couple things about painting with gouache and maybe you learned a little bit about me and my process. I have a different idea for the next video, I think, but we'll see what I end up doing. If you liked, you should click the subscribe button. I'm almost at 100 subscribers, so maybe you could be my hundredth. I'll see you sometime in the future. Bye.